Hey guys, did you catch the Tour Down Under recently? Did you see? Did you see the hill climb results? Did you see the final stage of the Tour Down Under? I hope you did because some of the climbing performances that we witnessed from Oscar Onley and a bunch of other riders was pretty good. Taking a snoop on Strava, I noticed that some of the riders were hovering around the seven to seven and a half watts per kilo mark for the final climb on the Tour Down Under up Wollonga Hill. Obviously, this would have been produced in a undulating manner, reacting to attacks and things. I did watch. I did watch it on playback. But I'm here because of two riders in particular, and this one event that was held alongside the pro race. So in my last video, I talked about how Richie Port was going up against Sierra Gigante for the title of fastest up Wollonga Hill. It caught my attention when I was sat in a cafe last week, just scrolling on my phone and hence here we are making this video. Now the results are in, the hill climb was done, and because the riders were setting off in like one minute intervals and you were able to pace the climb like you would a time trial, you would expect that maybe if riders are fresher they might be able to do a faster time than they would do in the race. I wonder if you knew this though, that Richie Port was actually gifted a factor or two van, the newest one, the one that I'm currently riding, although his was a rather striking paint job. He was riding that bike to do this time trial. Now Richie Port did actually manage to do a crazy fast time up there solo. So fast in fact, that it would have put him well inside the top 10 of the overall Strava leaderboard. But if you imagine the guys who are out there, we talk about it all the time, they're like five days into the race, there's 35 degree heat, and they're doing this effort at the end of the stage with fatigue and everything else. The difference is of course, Richie now no longer has to do that kind of stuff, and for a one-off effort and time trial like this, he would still be pretty handy. Now I actually had a man on the ground feeding me information over on Instagram, there was a couple of you that commented on the last video saying that you were going to be there uh, taking part, some of you watching as well. There was also like a hill climb car park type race, which I've seen a few of before. Uh, one of these was taking place in the area as well and I think was actually slightly bigger of an event than this Wollonga Hill Climb time draw. Now of the articles I read online, there's no real mention of anybody else other than Richie Port and Sierra Gigante. Now I watched the Tour Down Under and I did see them give a shout out to the winner on the actual live TV coverage on the prize presentation after that stage on Wollonga Hill. I thought it was pretty cool and I filmed it rather badly. But nonetheless, I wanted to give a shout out because we know that Richie Port did a good time. We know that Sierra Gigante did a good time, but hats off to everybody else who competed and compare, can compare themselves to these riders. That's the beauty of it. Now that we welcome our next door, the winner of the Yarmouth Malunga Hill Climb time trial today. Great to have you with us too, Max. So my man on the ground informed me that apparently not many people showed up. There was around 80 total. Now, considering the British Hill Climb Championships has like 400, 450 entries, I mean, you can't really compare it. In fact, you can't really compare the British Hill Climb Championships to any other hill climb event in the UK because the average attendance to all the other hill climb events in the UK is probably around 20. So if anything, this event has outshone a lot of UK hill climb events. They had some really good sponsors there as well. Obviously, Tour Down Under must have been backing it in some way but also Garmin too. I have been told by my informant though that if you are ever to go to Australia, particularly South Australia, or Southeast Australia, well, I mean Melbourne area specifically, then you need to do the one in 20 climb it's called on Strava. And that is one that is hotly contested. In fact, a certain Freddy Ovet had the KOM on there up until a couple of years ago. So Sarah, of course, uploaded her ride to Strava and we could see that she clocked a time of seven minutes and 53 seconds. She's the first woman in history to do a sub eight on this climb with an average power of 313 watts, which if Strava is to be believed, is around about six watts per kilo for around about eight minutes. Now, Richie Port did hold on to his KOM 
on Strava, even though the pro race went up there. Oscar only missed out by a single second, I believe. But like I touched on just now, Richie Port set a time of 6 minutes and 47 seconds, which was close to his 6.34 record. Now, a lot of articles say that's surprising, but, you know, generally someone like Richie should be able to hold on to some sort of form. He would be fairly fresh going into it. He would take it a little bit seriously, no doubt. I mean, you know, there's a bit of reputation on the line here, so he's going to go for it. And in a short effort over six minutes, seven minutes, you're going to expect him to do fairly good. Credit where credit's due to Richie. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's the video. I need to keep my eyes peeled for more stuff like this because I like covering it. It's really interesting. It's something that I enjoy doing myself and hopefully you enjoy watching it too. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed, give it a like, and I'll see you next time.